Okay, so where do we begin? And welcome everyone if you've just joined us. This is going to be Dwarf Fortress. Let's play 40.13. A bunch of patches come out, a lot of changes. Um, not too much to the Dwarf Fortress mode, not too much has been affected. So, what are we going to do? Well, first thing we need to do is dig down. There's a little crater over here which gives you a little insight to what there's going to be. Looks like a bunch of sand and then goes down to some stone. So nothing too important. So how do we dig down? Where do we go? Firstly, you look across on the right hand side. Designations. That's how you're going to be digging. So D and first option is going to auto go to is chop down trees. Well, we can do that because we need to get some wood eventually. So if we just chop down. So all you do is go over, highlights, press enter, move your cursors, shift and cursor goes, jumps 10 spaces. So you're just going to chop, chop down these three trees. That one, that one, and that one. That's fine. That Your woodcutter do that in a moment. You may notice everything is frozen because it's paused. Pause in the top corner. If you ever want to unpause it, you press spacebar, and then they'll all move about. Assuming you don't have this option open. If you do, you have to press escape, and then you go back to this, and then spacebar, and away you go. And the woodcutter will go over here and start chopping the wood. You see it's chopping the wood down there. So what do we want to do? We want to dig down. So press D, and you want to go downwards. So to do that, you want a downward stair, because they need to go down as well afterwards. So you want to use J. So there's a couple of ways things work in Dwarf Fortress. Firstly, dwarves need to pass by each other. If they pass by on a one square, which is this, this yellow cursor, that's a one square. If they were to have that, and you have to have one go up and one go down, one would stop, so the other can pass by, and then it go down. Clearly, that's not efficient, so you want a bigger space. So what I generally do is I will go with a 3x3. Three 3x3 by three. Three by three is a safe passage, and when you get trade carts later on, they can only pass by a three wide area. So it has to be a three by three area for them to get into. So as a rule of thumb, I always go with it. It's much easier. You won't have too many problems with blockages, etc. That people will be able to walk past. So all I'm going to do is press enter there with my downward staircase separated. Go down to there, press enter once again, and it does that. Basically, that's a blueprint for your miners to dig down. If we were to press escape and then spacebar, your miners will come over. And there you go. It's now dug out. Boom. Done. So, what just happened? Your miners just dug out the 3x3. Three three, and the woodcutter also just chopped down this tree, which is why you suddenly see a pile of wood. If you ever need to inspect anything, you press K. And this is your inspect key. You can if you want, actually use your mouse on that because some of you guys might be used to it. You can zip around and you can look. See, it tells you there's a hazel tree trunk. These have just been cut down. Pear wood logs. That's what he's done. He's about to cut down a... What the hell is that? A ginkgo tree. Well, he's about to cut down the ginkgo tree and then he's going to have ginkgo wood suddenly. Also, you can look at all these stuff you've got here so you can see the stuff that was there at the start is all your people. The, we go through them as we get through it. So, first thing we want to do, though... We want to dig down. We need to set up a farm. Now, obviously, being dwarves, it needs to be an underground farm. This is where they just dug down to. Now, what we need to set up here is so people can go back up is an upward staircase. Press D and U, and now I'm on that. And 3x3 three three again is going to go directly up. All I'm doing to go up and down again is shift and greater than, shift than, less than. Up and down between the two layers. So this is the top. This is below it. So that's going to set out that. I also want to set out something else, which is going to be a simple mining exercise. So you can see D. These are all your designations. Mine, channel, remove stairs, upward stairs, downward stairs. There's a bunch of different options there. Obviously, we'll go through them as we require them. At the moment, I'm just going to do a simple setup. So you do Shift key. I pressed enter, enter already on here with D. Basically, D mine is going to be a straightforward dig out this flat level. So down to there, 3x3, three three, and then I'm going to go across with my shift key down, move my cursor key across twice. One, two, enter. That's now going to dig out a passage. If I press escape, it goes back to the start, press space bar, unfreezes, they're going to dig through. So suddenly they're going to start digging down. As you can see, they've gone down from there. They're actually digging across under there, under the ground. There's my cursor, it goes straight to it. 
So they're going to dig that area out. So why am I doing this? Why am I digging out? Why? Am, well, at the end of the day, they're dwarves. Everything is underground for dwarves. They don't really like being above ground. They do all have, if you were to pause the game again, they all have background stories, likes, dislikes. Think of the Sims, what things they don't like in that. This goes beyond that. Press V. Go in towards your dwarf. This is your minor guy here. You can see him flashing. I'm on top of him. So on the right hand side it basically tells you the skills he's got. These are the skills you gave him at the very beginning. You know the start when we were selecting the skills. This is what he was giving him in the default. He's a uh, proficient miner. We can see that. I think I can move down with plus minus. I'm not too sure I can't remember how you move it. But anyway. Uh, he's a proficient miner and adequate organizer so he's going to be good to be using for later on that's something else you also have a bunch of options combat labor miscellaneous combat it tells you his combat skills you're just going to show them the main combat skill that comes up is novice discipline whatever that would go towards labor etc we're not going to worry about that too much what we want to look at is down here so we're looking at g general this is a general stuff i inventory this is all the stuff he's carrying bunch of trousers, rows, basically he's dressed, is what you're saying, and he's of course got a copper pick because he is a miner. Look at his preferences, you can tell this stuff. We're going to ignore this skill, ignore this one, because we're going to use a different program that does it for us called Dwarf Therapist. Uh, you can also look at W, which is his wounds, you can see he's not wounded at the moment, that's fine, or Z, his status. Now, at the moment, he's perfectly fine, you can press enter, you can look at his thoughts, and suddenly it gives you a life story on the guy. Well, if you really want to get deep and into the meta, you can go through this and you can also find out exactly what they like, what they dislike, and set up each individual dwarf and try and make their perfect life. I don't know, if you guys want to do that, then sure, so be it. I'd turn to go with a sort of all clean sweep case mainly for the fact that while we've only got seven dwarves right now you can tell in the corner seven idlers you will go up to 200 let's look at dwarf therapists quickly because that's going to be one of the main things this is going to be a program that probably is loaded up what you need to do is connect to dwarf fortress it will load up and there's your seven dwarves set up let's go full screen on this one so you can see what we're looking at basically this is very simple there might be uh labors might not be on there as by default but you can simply do that by doing add add a filter uh, and you can add it in there, it's over here, sorry, add a filter we want labors full, that's what I've gone with, you can have it compact as well this is basically shows you exactly what skills your dwarf have got, so you can see the two miners they're there, there's your carpenter etc this will be really useful later on, at the moment you probably don't want to go too deep into it, but you can if you would like you could tell this guy here to also become a mason and also become a stone crafter. You can see over the side this is going to do and then you'll commit. We'll probably go into that as and when you need to go through it but at the moment it's pretty straightforward. So what do we want to do? Let's get let's get things started. You've got the basics down. You're digging stuff out. We need to make a field. A field area. Basics of a fort. You know what? This is a great time to show you Dwarf Wiki. I know I'm jumping around a bit but this is a website that I have linked in there. Um, this is the, the basic I, I guess Bible for Dwarf Fortress um, there is actually a very useful guide on here if I can see it of a quick little framework of what you want to do what you want to build what order sort of just help you out uh, you might be able to find it I can't see it at the top uh, nope can't see it uh, I'll find it later anyway so what I will do is I'll tell you what you got to do. That's what I'm going to do. That make it a lot easier. So basically, we're on a soil layer here. If you press K, this is this is loam carved out. So it's basically soil. Um, simple area. We want to cut out, carve one out. Boom, boom, done. I'm going to go up one more because I prefer it that way. Entrance done. So that's going to be a 10 by 10 area. In come our miners press space bar, in they come, they're going to dig out this 10x10 10 10 area. So what do we need this 10x10 10 10 area for? First you need to get plants, so you need to get a grower on the case, which is what we're going to do here. You also need an area for a woodwork guy, so he can, the carpenter can get underway, we'll do that in a moment, um, but one step at a time, and then also we need to get brewing alcohol. These are like the basics of a fort that will get things going. Um, 
if you want to know how and why and where, uh, I'd actually pause the music, hadn't I? That's why it's probably a little bit quiet, but um, I'll keep the music off for now because it helps me concentrate a little bit more while I'm talking to you guys. So, okay, let's pause him again. So we've dug out this 10 by 10 area. What do I want to do? I want to build, so B, if I look on here, you can see it as building, B, and P, which is, if I were to go down here somewhere, is going to be, uh, I don't know where it is anymore, because I'm just so used to hotkeys, farm plot, there it is, P, farm plot, and you may have noticed there's a hell of a lot of options. So, we need to, if you see over here, change the width and change the height, and again, we're back to UMKH, so I want it as big as I can go, which is, I think, there. So that's a farm plot. So we're going to have this big farm plot. I'm going to whack it straight in the middle. Boom. Enter. So what I'm also going to do is do a storage around the side, which is P, which is somewhere around here. Stockpiles. P. And I need to do a food storage. F. So I'm going to do it underneath it. Boom. Which is actually only going to do, you can see, around the edge of it. This is just how I prefer to do it. You can do it differently if you like. Now I'm also going to alter that stockpile. What do I need to alter it for and why the hell am I doing this? So, this is going to become a farm plot. You're going to plant plump helmets, which is like the staple diet of a dwarf. And you're going to go through the seasons. You have, obviously, the four seasons that you would have in a normal world. And you've got to plant the plants in there. So what I want to do is set up seeds. I want to remove barrels because they annoy me and which is shift E you don't have to do that this is entirely my little quirk and I'm going to do settings which is this it's S so why the hell am I doing this because at the moment it's a simple food stockpile which basically means everything food related will get put in there so as you can see the meat the fish the unprepared fish eggs plants drinks drink of plant form animal form that's going to be milk cheeses seed everything is in there don't want all of that all I want is plump helmet seeds. Don't give a shit about anything else. So, I'm going to press these F on this. So I've gone across with my cursor keys. I want to meet. I'm going to do F, and that's going to remove everything from this side. Go on to fish. F. 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 Get rid of the F in lot. Remove everything. There we go. And I'm also going to remove... There's also a sneaky one here called prepared food. You gonna get rid of that. So I also want to actually F on the seed. So now literally everything is disabled in this food stockpile. So it's not gonna put anything in there. What I want to do now is go across to here and press S. This is a gigantic list of all sorts of foods. Could be in there. S. I'm gonna search for plump. And there you are, plump helmet spawn. Press enter, press enter, that's enabled. So now that is the only thing in that stockpile that will ever get sit in there. And there it is, plump helmet spawn. So escape, and escape again, and unpause. There we go. The farmer's going to come in. He's going to build this. It's going to be a big plot of land. And immediately they come down, and they put the, put the uh, seeds in there. And as soon as he's built, I will show you exactly what I need to do. While that is going on, I'm also going to get the next area built. I've also screwed up this area, so anyone that's watching that has a little bit of ADHD may get annoyed. This is actually a game that anything like that, you put something slightly out of place, oh, trust me, it will annoy you. So I'm just waiting for this farmer to plant this field. While it's happening, these guys are digging out another area below. What's that? is finally sorted out. This is going to be my carpenter's place down here. There we go. Right, he's finished. So, this is your plot of land. What I'm doing there, actually, I'm pressing Q, which is like a query. Anyone who does database stuff would be instantly. I think the actual name for it is Set Building Task Preferences. I just call it Query. Press Q. So, what's happening here? This is our field that we've just built. I've built this farm plot. Down the bottom here, you can see spring, summer, autumn, winter. A, B, C, D. Dead easy. Uh, you can fertilize. You can do all sorts of stuff. You don't worry about any of that for now. You can look at it maybe later on as you get developed in the game. So, as you can see, in spring, you can only plant 
these four things. Well, we haven't got seeds for those, it tells you straight away. I have got seeds for plump helmets, press enter. Highlights it, press B, go down to plump helmets, press enter. Press C, go down to plump helmets, press enter, press D, and there you go. All seasons set up, they will plant the plump helmets, they'll grow, and they'll pick them all up, and the next season comes around and they'll plant them all again. Really easy. There we go. So that's your basic food stuff set up. They're going to come in. In comes the farmer. There you go. See him. He's planting a seed. Even if we want to really want to look at him, we could see what he's doing in his general, and it tells you that he is planting a seed. Awesome stuff. And he's just picked that seed up from that bag, which I didn't want him to use in the first place, but it gets them out the way. So we're digging out this next guy. There you go. See, he's just planted that seed. Boom. If I were to look at it, it says it's a farm plot. It doesn't tell you jack shit else because it's planted. You can't tell. There we go. Ah, that's an annoying annoyance straight away. I want to get rid of these trees. So, there's our next area, dug out. What do we want to do in here? We want a carpenter setup. Why do we want a carpenter? So, we need to build a workshop. Press B and W for workshops. Workshops is there. W and we need a carpenter's workshop which is C. B W C. That gives you a 3x3. Three three. Every workshop is 3x3 three three apart from a couple which is like a siege workshop and stuff like that. So where do you want to put it? Doesn't really matter. You can put it anywhere you like. I tend to just whack them in the corners. Um, mainly for, I don't know, I don't know why I do that, I just put them there to be honest, I've got to be honest. I'm going to put two of them in there, you can put as many as you like, you really don't need too many in there. Um, what we're also going to do is a stockpile, because, well, what does a carpenter use? He uses wood, so we want the wood as near to the stockpile as possible, you can see it's all up there at the moment, that's all the wood, we want to bring it all down, so we're going to do P for another stockpile, and we're just going to do W as a wood stockpile. We're going to say, fill that entire area with wood. I don't think there's anything fancy we need to do with it. I've never really bothered. Yeah, there's, there's really nothing. They're just going to bring wood down. If you want to be specific and use certain bits of wood, then sure, go for it. Eat your heart out. You can get as micro-intensive as you like. But what you can see is now all the dwarves that were idle, we had seven idlers up here. They're not idle anymore because they're all getting these bits of wood. And they're all bringing them down, putting them into your wood pile. So, giving them an order. It's all good. Let's get the next area set up. We need a another area dug out. This is going to be for a s distillery, basically. We need to use them plump helmets that we're growing here. And we need to turn them into alcohol. Because, well, simply put, dwarves work faster on alcohol than they do on water. Because... Why not? They're dwarves, after all. That's kind of how it works. So as soon as they dig this area out, we'll get uh, a loom built in there, which I'm going to do now, because I'm going to do it already. So B, W, uh, not a loom, sorry, uh, L. I always think loom for some reason, but it's still. So distillery, boom. Uh, make it out of the logs, sure, why not? I'm going to do another two there, and job done. So there we go, nice and easy. That was quick and simple. They're going to go and build it. The guy comes along. This is your architect guy. He comes along. There you go. There's a still been built. The wood's been built here as well. So, where do we go now? Once that next still gets built, I'll tell you. Just waiting for that to happen. Okay, so, we're going to start doing a couple of orders now. Actually, I want to, where's my walkers gone? They've gone? They're buggered off upstairs. They're getting a drink or food or some variety. Okay. Right. So, now we need to port, because we've got this distillery in here, we need to make an area for the food, the plump helmets being built. So again, we need to do another food area, PF, bum, 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 set up something over here. It can be as big or as little as you like. I'm just going to do an area like that. And then I'm going to query it again. Q. So this is a food stockpile again, remember, like we did with the seeds at the very beginning. Go down to food, and I'm going to disable everything again. Why the hell am I doing that, you may wonder. Because I only want a certain food type in here. And what's going to get created? It's going to be plump. 
helmets. That's what's being made, and that's all I want in this food storage. So now, what I've made it do is say, these are going to get grown. They're going to become plump helmets. The farmer's going to come along, he's going to pick them up, and he's going to put them in there. And that's right next to the distillery. So again, being efficient is all that's about. I'm also going to remove barrels. Should I remove barrels? Yes, I will. I'm going to remove barrels. Barrels help. This is the thing. Barrels do help because they stop food rotting. But for now, I'm going to do that. We'll perhaps look at that later. This is just a pet peeve I've had. Uh, you may have noticed, actually, that something on my screen has just appeared, which is this, which is some remains. Uh, you can't see it. It's where my cursor is. There. Hamster remains. These cats running around. I've killed a hamster. It's in there. Well, that's not very good, is it? We don't want that. So let's go upstairs. Let's go up on the top. Let's do another stockpile, P. This time around, though, we want refuse. Ah. So we're going to build a refuse pile. Um, I often prefer to get this the hell out away from my area. Um, I think I might move it away somewhere, but also trying to think let's do it above this one let's do it let's do it directly there let's use that area there as a refuse pile I'm gonna get rid of that tree because it's in the way and that's gonna be a refuse pile so what goes in there basically it'll just take the bones up there all that sort of stuff um, but for now they probably won't pick it up because I need to tell them to do it they'll probably leave that bones there well I don't want bones lying around my dwarf fortress so I'm gonna change that so pause the game now, I need to remember where the hell this is. Aha! This is a question. Uh, I want to change my orders. I think it's O. Yes, it is. And refuse. So O and R. Refuse. So over here is a bunch of options saying dwarves gather refuse. Dwarves ignore refuse from outside. Actually, I want to change that because I don't want to mess and I also want to gather refuse from outside and I do not want to ignore vermin remains I want to gather the vermin remains so that should do that I also want to use the forbid forbid use ammunition forbid other death objects I'm fine with that everything else I will probably keep the same for now there you can go quite in depth on a lot of this stuff you may have figured that out by now right okay this wood stockpile is being built the stillery is being built. Let's get building some items. So everything is controlled in this game by using Q so much. So Q, once again, in the corner. Where's my cursor going? Who knows? What I want to do now is go over the workshops. These are the ones we built. This is the carpenter's workshop built earlier. Remember B, W, C to build that carpenter's workshop. Now we've built it. We're over it with a Q. And you add tasks. So add a new task and we kinda need to build some beds and barrels but cause since I'm not using the barrels right now we're just gonna construct a bunch of beds because at the end of the day the doors are gonna need to sleep somewhere so B I'm gonna add B 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 you can do repeats you can do all sorts you can promote tasks but for now I just want a simple bunch of beds that's fine uh, I can't make any food yet because I probably need some seeds. Let's have a quick look. Uh, I don't have any plants yet. No, so that's going to have to wait. Uh, I'm also going to build something else here, which you guys... Ah, why not? Go ahead and build it. All I'm going to do is plant a bunch more seeds. I think I've got pigtail seeds. I think. So... They only grow at certain times a year. But pigtails are used for clothing. So this is actually quite far ahead. You probably don't need to do this yet, but why not? Let's get it down there. Let's get it started. Start off early with our clothing industry. It will elevate the price um, of your fortress. Actually, let me just show you that. Press Z. Just in the straightforward Z, which is, if I were to look on here, it says status. So that's basically your fortress at the moment. We've got no one allocated to counting the stocks, so there's no way of telling the exact figures, which is why 
We can't see what our created wealth cost is because we need a broker, we need trade information, so we need appraisal skills, etc. In there, eventually, you'd have a figure for the value of your fortress created wealth. That triggers a lot of things. Um, if suddenly you've got gold in your fortress and the value's going higher, well, sure as shit, you're going to get attacked by more people because they want to raid and steal your wealth. Well, at the moment, we'd be absolutely helpless. They'd come and slaughter us. And that is where a lot of the fun comes in for the dwarves. Uh, so, once this digs out, we should be good to go. All I'm going to do is build another, another exactly the same as this. It's all I'm doing here. And everything is good. Ooh, what are these? What are these over here? Uh, wild boar sows. And there's quite a few of them. This is where we had the wilderness option at the very start. I'm hoping they're just going to stay the hell away and not come near me because they might start causing problems. Okay, done. Plot. Build another farm plot. B, P. Farm plot. Let's get another big in, in there. Big farm plot. Put another food stockpile in around it. Boom, done. Awesome. Let's query it. So, stockpile, food, disable everything. I only want. Don't want fat in there. I want to get rid of everything else. And now I just want to search for pigtails, and I want pigtails in around it. And I also want to get rid of the barrels. Job done. Damn it, wasn't quick enough. They just put barrels in there. <laughs> What's in the barrels? Gotta be really quick on that stuff. Uh, it is dwarven beer. Great. Wasn't quick enough. Bunch of food's been put in there. That's fine. Whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Let's port a area somewhere else around here as well. Alright, let's start digging down. I mean, this is the basic area done. I'm going to possibly set up future areas there. And I'm going to do downward stairs here. So, we now want to dig deeper. We want to start getting stoned. I'm going to go down, go down a bunch of spots. That's now placed. So, what have I just done there? I did D and I did I, which is up and down stairwell. So all I've done is a 3x3 three three again and I've gone down and you can set it to dig orders multi-layered. So all I've done is told it to go go dig down there, bunch of layers and then away you go. Until you actually join up these bits they're not going to dig this area out. So this is just future planning. Oh, some dwarf has run out of ammunition. So you're going to get announcements as it goes uh, which is A. And you can see this guy has basically just said he's run out of ammunition. So I guess I had the hunter dwarf that was out there trying to shoot people. If you want to look at the combat log, you see in the top corner you've got hunt and C. Press R. And you can tell the hunter was fighting one of the wild boars. There you go. Fired a copper bolt. Ran out. Ran out of ammunition. So he ran away. Ooh, what is this? This is red sand. Okay. So we've got some red sand in here now. And yes, we just hit something awesome. So we've got andesite wall, so whatever stone that is. But this here, this red thing, this is what you want to find. This is hematite. That's iron, which means we have iron available to us. If we have, uh, I don't recall andesite being a flux stone. I'm just going to double check that. Andesite. And a site, and a site. How do you spell it? Damn you, damn you. A N D E S I T E. It is a bog standard stone. Unremarkable. Great. Bunch of stuff. But it's magma safe. I think that just said. Did it say? It is not magma safe. Well, shit. It's useless. All right. I'll keep digging down. Oh, what is this? This is nasty, horrible rhyolite. Looks ugly as sin. 
Alright, we've got no flux stones so far, so we're not going to be able to make steel. But, it's alright. It's alright, okay. We can work with that, we can work with that. That's for sure. So, let's get things moving along. Now let's go down. We want to get dwarves into somewhere. Actually, it's ugly as sin down there, though, but this is where the bedroom area is going to go down, I think. I'm just going to stretch out the area. So that's going to be the miners working down there. So, I think what I'll probably do is pause it there for you guys to sort yourselves out. Stop the recording, come back to you in a second, and then plan things out, and then take you through the next stage. See you soon.